today, Bill? Well, Rick, we are in the little town of Albany, New Hampshire. And if you would like, you can join me in the opening lyrics from a wonderful New Hampshire song. Ready? Well, I don't know if our audience <laughs> is, but let's go ahead. All right. There is an old-fashioned house in New Hampshire with a light in the window for me. And so goes the, the lyrics of A Light in the Window, which was written by Sam Lewis and Robert King in the 1930s. If you're familiar or you're a New Hampshire resident, you no doubt are familiar with WMUR's Chronicle and the wonderful segments by Fritz Weatherby. Uh, I could find no reference that this is the inspiration for the song, but if it isn't, it should be. Because this is the story of Ruth Colbath, and she is the woman who kept the light in the window. And the story is, in the fall of 1891, Ruth's husband, a Thomas Alden Colbath, told her he was going out for a little while and that he would be back. Well, he did. He returned 42 years later. On the night that he left, Ruth placed a light in the window, and she would do, to, do so faithfully for 39 years until she died. Eventually, Thomas did reappear, reappear, and he came back 43 years later in 1933, and of course she had already passed away. And when he was told of her death, he simply disappeared again. Yeah, <laughs> interesting character. Well, nowadays, the house sits on the Kankamagas Highway, uh, which is one of the most popular uh, scenic highways, I think, in the country. Mm -hmm. People come from all over the world to drive this. Uh, again, like our uh, one of our videos about the Willy slide, we do have cars going by. Uh, hopefully our microphones will be helping us with that. Uh, but that's why they come here is for the great scenery. As you go over the notches here in the Kankamagas, it's, it's, it's really incredible how beautiful it is, especially in the fall. Um, just to give you a little background, I mean, this, the house now is maintained by the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, right now it's closed. We're here sort of in the what mid-May. Uh, it's probably going to open fairly soon. I would think so. Um, and they actually have um, people who sit and wear the traditional clothing and, um, and greet people in here. I've been in there a few times. The home was built in 1832 by Thomas Russell, who was Ruth's grandfather. Then it was passed on to his son, Eliza, who became one of the first industrial loggers in the White Mountains. We're actually going to a little bit, at some point, we're going to also talk about another logger, but we will wait for that one, a guy named Jigger Johnson. Um, he owned, uh, not Jigger, but Thomas owned a sawmill and owned thousands of acres back in those days. Um, a lot of these farms actually included a lot of land, uh, but he was heavily in debt on his on his uh, on on the event of his death. He was survived by his wife, who transferred the property to his to their daughter Ruth and her husband Thomas, mm -hmm. who was the man who decided <laughs> to uh, disappear. Uh, I've heard stories that he's. He went all around the world, but who knows? Uh, I don't think anybody knows for sure. Uh, in any case, we are standing in front of the house she lived in. This is where her farm was. Uh, just over behind the camera right now is the cemetery where Ruth is buried. I think we should go look I at it, so. don't you yep. think? Join us now. We're going to go over and take a look at Ruth's grave. Okay, let's go. Well, this is the grave of Ruth. And the house is now behind us. And this is an absolutely gorgeous little cemetery, a little family cemetery, the Colbert Cemetery. It is maintained not by the Forest Service. It's uh, maintained by the town of Albany. So if you do stop by here, you certainly would, uh, would want to take a few moments to come over and pay your respects to Ruth, but walk around the cemetery. And we're going to do that. We will show you around a little bit. Right. 
Well, Ruth, you had an interesting life. <laughs> you certainly uh, did. I had to deal with, I suspect, a lot of hardship. Um, but on the other hand, when you think of what life really must have been like out here on the Kankamagas back in that day, during that time. Yep. The truly the fateful wife. Yep, absolutely. Yep. All right, well, let's take a look at the at the cemetery. And uh, as we've said with most, all of our, I think, uh, uh, clients or whatever we want to call them, uh, rest in peace, Rest Ruth. in peace, Ruth. This is part of the original, I think, cemetery here, the Passa Conway Cemetery, back when this area was called Passa Conway. Um, it ha it is now the town of um, Albany, if you can see the house in the background. Uh, so, like many people in those days, the the, um, the cemetery wasn't too far from where they where they lived, and there are people who still are buried uh, next to their homes, but not as many as there used to be. Uh, let's also just do in a minute. A pan from a slightly different angle, but um, both of us are were uh, intrigued by the, uh, the 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 entrance way over here on the left. Mm -hmm. 